thank you for being here and for thinking of our kids and also for wanting to protect future generations from the same, the same suffering that our families have experienced. So over the years, the composition of the work group has included numerous regulatory agencies, the parties responsible for cleaning up SSFL, independent experts, and community representatives. Its most critical function has been to educate and engage the community in cleanup efforts, and that is our focus tonight. It is now my pleasure to introduce Ventura County Supervisor Bob Huber. Supervisor Huber has served this community as mayor of Simi Valley from 2010 to 2018, and as a council member from 1980 to 1984. Please welcome Supervisor Hubert. Hello, everybody. Appreciate you being here. This is uh, an area that I know very well. Uh, this, was the, uh, this was my funeral home for many years. We're the only people who lived in this building, my wife and my two sons, we lived downstairs. When they, when they asked me to open this meeting and to uh, welcome everyone, I agreed with uh, no hesitation whatsoever. I moved here to this community over 50 years ago, and I'm well aware uh, of the issue, meaning the San Susana uh, field problems that's before us. The issue is certainly important to me as it is for all of us that are here. However, what you not know is that many decades ago, I called this building, now known as the Smee Valley Cultural Arts Center, as my home, which I just said. Back then, the building was known as the Huber Chapel Mortuary. My family, my wife, two sons, and I lived here, and we lived downstairs. So welcome to Sumi Valley, and welcome to what used to be my home. Yeah. More importantly, I wanted to thank you all for your interest in the Susanna, Susanna Field Lab and the effort to force the responsible parties to clean it up to the safest and cleanest levels possible. Those of us who live here in Sumi Valley and the surrounding areas of Ventura County and Los Angeles County deserve to have it cleaned up. Before we get started with the meeting, I also want to recognize my colleague, Supervisor Linda Parks. She's sitting, sitting on the, you want to come up with me? Say a few words? Okay. Uh, she represents the neighboring district. Together, our constituents, excuse me, there's dark up here, are the ones most greatly affected in Ventura County by the cleanup effort uh, of the Santa Susana Field Lab. As a big part of the discussion here today is how much more needs to be done. However, we have come a long way over the past few decades from where we started. Much of that progress is due to the diligence, knowledge, and commitment of Supervisor Linda Parks. Let's give her a hand for leading that. <laughs> Even before she was elected, and certainly uh, when, then when she was the mayor of Thousand, Thousand Oaks, and today on the Board of Supervisors, she has been focused to restore the land where it should be. I do not believe we would be here today without her, and I thank her deeply from the bottom of my heart. I'm glad to be working by her side. Making sure that the land is at the cleanest and safest possible level is something I have fought for, but I've always known that I could not do it alone. I always made it a point to reach out to Supervisor Parks, or was always happy to join her when Supervisor Parks reached out to me to sign, co-sign letters and put our voices together. So let's give her another hand, please. At this critical point, when the responsible parties are wanting to once again to go back on their promises, it's more important than ever that we work together to get this done. I know we have a full agenda, so I want to make sure we get started on the important work this evening. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to welcome you here tonight to this place that I used to call home. I appreciate it. It's now my pleasure to introduce Melissa Bumstead. First met Melissa in 2014 when she and a group of young moms attended a DTSC meeting and said they had met each other while their children were receiving care at Children's Hospital and they realized they were neighbors. Many of us in the room that day got chills because it wasn't the first time that we had heard of this happening. In 2006, 11 cases of retinoblastoma, a rare eye cancer, were diagnosed near SSFL and those mothers too met at Children's Hospital. They even had a chemo carpool. 
It's been an incredible honor to watch Melissa find her voice and use it to fight for the SSFL cleanup, organizing literally hundreds of thousands of people in the process. Please welcome Melissa Bumstead. Hi, everybody. Um, first of all, I, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, I know that we all had other things that we could have done with tonight. I know we, many of us have children. Valentine's Day is tomorrow. I know my to-do list is not going to end with this meeting. I've got to go home and have family life, because we do. And so um, I was one of the moms who started the Change.org petition. It came about after my friend Lauren Hammersley and I met at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, and we were surprised because childhood cancer is exceedingly rare. There are 15,000 new diagnoses in America every year out of 72 million children. It was statistically improbable that we would live within five to even 10 miles of each other. Um, I, I tucked it away as a red flag. My daughter had an extremely rare and aggressive form of leukemia. Um, and the amount of chemotherapy she had to have the first time she had cancer was up to 10 times the normal dose for a regular leukemia patient. And so obviously our hands were very, very full. And it was a very frightening time. And, and thankfully, um, Lauren's friendship helped through much of that. Then I met. Um, then I met a little boy who lived just two blocks over, one street up, and I thought, that, that is odd. I can't believe that we would find someone. And then uh, a newborn twin, one of the first families we met, one of the boys had retinoblastoma behind the um, El Camino High School. Again, only a few miles from my home. And the red flags started to build, but um, I'd actually become quite a different person than I used to be. Back then, I would rather hide under my bed and just keep to my quiet little life. Um, it wasn't until I had another mom in the hospital, um, my good friend Julia, now, but at the time I didn't know her. She opened the door of the hospital and said, I know you. It kind of creeped me out. Um, she said, I remember your daughter. She was bald. We were at the park the same day as you. And I said, I'm sorry, that is impossible. I, you cannot have been from our park. Um, I actually went home and looked at the picture. She's in the background of all of them from the day that she mentioned. Her daughter uh, was diagnosed with an extremely rare form of um, uh, cancer called neuroblastoma. Um, 11 months later, she passed away at two years old. And, and this pattern kept happening until we just couldn't ignore it anymore. In fact, um, almost exactly four years ago, Lauren and I were among two of seven cancer moms uh, who came to the first, first time we'd ever heard of the Santa Susana Field Lab. And I grew up in Thousand Oaks. And I never heard of that before. And when we got there, um, they had a three-hour presentation. And at the very end of it, they said, every number that we've shown you tonight is a uh, hypothetical. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I know that if you have a three-hour presentation about the contamination and you have all the data available, you don't present hypothetical information unless you have something to hide. And I went to the parking lot and almost threw up. Um, but I, I hid it away. It was too frightening. It was absolutely too frightening, especially every day I kept meeting new families, especially as the, the Facebook world we started to connect. And through um, Google Maps, we actually started mapping ourselves and, and started to realize with quite a bit of horror, this, this is not statistically possible. And it was through that that we started the Change.org petition. It now has over 700,000 signatures. and. The thing that has been remarkable is that when I first wanted to talk about the Santa Susana Field Lab to people, I was, I was terrified. I'm a very, very timid person by nature. And I remember I had decided at that point it was too painful. And I, I'm just a mom. I have no scientific training. I have no, you know, I have a college degree in graphic design, but that in no way qualifies me for trying to stand up and say, I think there's something wrong with the environment here. I think there's something wrong happening at the Santa Susana Field Lab. Um, and I remember one day, I was in Target, and I saw a mom carrying a little baby that was blonde and bald, because it was a, it was a baby. And I had a, a legitimate panic attack, and I realized I thought that child had cancer. And if that child did have cancer, the mom wouldn't have known anything about the Santa Susana Field Lab because nobody knew about it four years ago. Nobody talked about it in my generation with all the new families that had moved into West Hills, Simi Valley, Thousand Oaks, 
These communities have excellent schools, Calabasas, Agora, Oak Park. They have excellent communities. People come here specifically for the family aspect of it. And none of us had heard about the Santa Susana Field Lab, even many of us who grew up here or thought it was an urban legend or assumed that it had been cleaned because they wouldn't let us live here if it was dangerous. Um, and when I realized that this child, I thought they had cancer, if I knew the truth, because at that point I had done quite a bit of research and realized there was a big danger. There was a lot of carcinogenic, insane amount of chemical and carcinogenic radioactive waste still on site at the Santa Susana Field Lab. If I did nothing, then I might as well be on Boeing's team. I might as well sign up with them. Because if I'm not actively making it better, there's, there's no such thing as a, a middle ground here. There's no such thing as, as being inactive with that kind of knowledge. Because once you know, you can't unlearn that. And, and to not do something, even if it's just to talk to your neighbor about it, or to come out tonight to do nothing, is to be as guilty as the people who, who chose to keep this hidden for almost 30 years before it was discovered. Um, and that, that was the day that I realized I'm, I'm going to hurt no matter what. If I keep it to myself and try to protect myself, every time I see a child with cancer, I'm going to die inside. And if I get out of my comfort zone and I do something that I'm no way qualified to do just because it seems like the right thing to do as a regular person with a moral compass, that was going to hurt. So either way I was going to hurt, I'd rather have it hurt to help children. And I'd rather have it, um, as Lauren said, being a cancer mom, um, it was bad the first time, but when my daughter relapsed three years later, I, I, I think I died a little bit inside. And I, to be honest, not been able to find that place again. I don't know if it can come back alive. The amount of psychological and emotional damage that especially a mom goes through trying to help your child survive something so horrible. And no offense, you guys, but if you've not been into a childhood cancer ward, you only guess at what childhood cancer is. Um, when they lose their hair, that's the easiest part. And which was hard to say, because my daughter had gorgeous, gorgeous curly blonde hair. And, and having to shave that off, um, was, it was traumatic. But I, I had no idea at the beginning that that would be the easiest part. Um, I don't really want to go into the details of it right now, because it, it is traumatic for anyone who even hears it, let alone lives it. But it is enough for you to know that it is worth stopping. Even if it was for one child, it would be enough to say this cannot happen anymore, especially if there's a chance that it's preventable, which I believe that it is. And that's why we've been working so hard for the last four years, um, being out of our comfort zone, being called horrible things, being um, kind of the black sheep for a while. I'm very, very glad to say that that is a thing of the past. I'm very glad to say that now the community does know. When I go into the public and I, I hand out flyers, people say, I've heard about this. I remember I was at um, a Starbucks and I was handing out flyers and one mom was like, I don't know who you are or what you're doing. And the other mom said, no, no, she's okay, she's helping us. And, and so the community has really changed. They've, they've come um, to an agreement that this can't go on anymore, that the, it stops with us. We're not going to let our children have to clean up this mess and have to do what we are doing now. And we're willing to take on any pain or discomfort Whatever it takes to make sure our children are safe and that this does not continue has become the new mantra, especially of Simi Valley, I'll say, but also of the surrounding communities. And I'm, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of you guys. And I, I, I wrote down a little bit saying that um, parenting is hard. We know that. But it was never meant to be this hard. It was never meant to be parents having to come to a meeting to learn about the contamination that could potentially blow through your yard every single time it is windy. And it's windy a lot out here. I actually think about that every single time. Is it safe to let my child go out? And to be honest, there's no, there's no guessing. There's just trying to live your life as normal as you possibly can, because as Lauren mentioned, we tried to move away. We actually had an offer in Indiana. Uh, we had a house that we were going to purchase. And the day my daughter relapsed was the day that the sale went through. And we had to cancel it from the hospital hallway. Um, we are not financially able to move. This is where we have, I believe this is where God has me, and so we're going to stay here, and we're going to fight, and we're going to clean it up. And I wanted to thank you guys for being here, because your commitment to being here, to get the knowledge that you need to learn about what we need to do as a community to move forward together, um, 
it's, it's remarkable, and please don't underestimate the power that you have just by being here tonight. And um, I know you, um, I just, I know that it takes a lot to be out here. As a mom, I get that. And, and as just a person who wants to live a, a regular life, it, it was a commitment for you guys to come, and I knew you would. I knew that you guys would be here tonight. And so I would like to thank you for being the power of the people, which is amazing because we're standing up against Boeing and NASA and the Department of Energy, but together we actually have the power to make them have to stop and rethink what they're doing. Um, that's a force that's, that's, I feel humbled to be part of and that we are a force to be reckoned with. And so thank you guys for being here tonight. I hope that you have an open mind and an open heart. I know that the information can be overwhelming um, and that's okay. We're, we're all overwhelmed with this. This is a lot to happen, especially in our community when the stakes are so high for us personally. But we're part of this together, and so if you feel overwhelmed, that's okay. We've all got each other's backs, and we're all gonna get through this together. Thank you very much. Thank you.